I left off my EPX project over a year ago with performance testing. What I found was that quadcopter batteries, the, the little tiny 250 gram drones, they take a lot of current and the cells that are produced for that application are able to deliver a greater speed for the derailleur, but also power and force. It all kind of combines together. Not only did they provide better performance, but they were also able to maintain that performance as the batteries got low. That's a, that's a really interesting characteristic. A lot of people can't notice it, but uh, seasoned pros or, or people who are keen with electronics can certainly notice derailleur performance drops as battery charge drops. But the trade-off is weight. And some people will know lithium cells can trade off their specific energy for specific power. Or put another way, they, they can trade their milliamps and milliamp hours. You can have high capacity, high milliamp hours, and lower current delivering capabilities, lower milliamps or amps. There are a few things I hate about electronics design when it comes to batteries. Chief amongst them is the state of charge or your battery percentage. The reason being is if you're trying to make something cost sensitive, generally what you do is you take your battery and you measure the voltage. And then you have a curve that usually goes down and flattens out and comes back down. And what you do is you model that curve and you take a voltage measurement and then you figure out what percentage that would correlate to. Well, the problem with that is it's not very accurate because it doesn't take into account the temperature, which will shift up and down the graph. It doesn't take into account if you are temporarily pulling a lot of current, so the voltage sags. It doesn't take into account cell aging. It doesn't take into account uh, for multi-cell systems, cell imbalance or internal resistance imbalances so that they respond differently to current uh, when you're pulling a lot of current. It doesn't take into account aging. It doesn't it take into account um, all of these little things. And then you're left with a fairly bad experience because people are either charging early or your battery says 80% and it just drops. Um, or you're left a case with cell imbalance where it you think it's charged and, and two out of three cells are charged, there could be one in there that isn't. And what's happened is the other two pass two, 4.2 volts or about 4.25, which would be their um, overvolt protection. And that last one could still be way low and, and they weren't balanced. So now you've just lost capacity uh, because you're never going to get those to kind of come back in line without a balanced charger. Luckily, you can solve this with money. And that means just using what's called a fuel gauge. And there's a lot of history and there are a lot of bad ones out there. The really cheap ones are just trash. But for applications like this, you need a circuit that can kind of mix because we are pulsing current. So we need to measure the current. So we need a Coulomb counter based one, but because we're going long periods between shifts, we also want one that has a sophisticated algorithm that's gonna take in things like temperature, cell voltage, cell resistances, cell aging, um, how the, that resistance changed during their, their charge and discharge profiles. And they're out there and they cost a little bit. If you recall, the cells I was using in those original videos, um, these quadcopter ones, they were not actually just standard lithium polymer, but what they were, were lithium high voltage. Uh, so basically that's a type of lithium polymer and there are various different chemistries. In fact, your phone and your laptop and, a, and any other high, high end device likely uses that. But most of your cheaper consumer things or your, your, your big bulky cells, they tend not to be, they tend to be standard lithium uh, polymers or lithium ions that are 4.2 volt charge. The reason that's kind of important here is uh, it's the high voltage that is going to kind of give us that really good performance near the end of charge. Uh, part of it is is the type of cells being able to deal more current, but part of it is just giving us that little extra boost by using lithium high voltage. Not a common chemistry, which means it's not common for things like battery protection. The fuel gauges are usually okay with them. They, they usually are multi-chemistry, but we need battery protection. But I don't want to deal with battery protection for every different type of chemistry because I might want to go back to lithium polymer. I might go to lithium ion. I might, I might even go to a lithium iron phosphate and do four cells to get the voltage I want. So I want 
something that's compatible. And luckily, uh, a few manufacturers, namely TI and Maxim, are making a combined battery protection circuit with a really good fuel gauge. And what that allows me to do is all those characteristics of state of charge and the battery model and all that, I get. But I can also program what are my over voltage protections, what's my under voltage protections. I can program my current because they have a shunt resistor. They've accurately measured the current. So now we have accurate overcurrent, but we also have overcurrent for charge. We also have um, short circuit current and we can adjust the times. There's all sorts of really good features. And by doing that, it makes the whole thing compatible to almost every chemistry. Uh, and I just put on a few little uh, spots where I can add jumpers near the balance resistors. And that basically allows me to do this for two S or two cells all the way to four cells. So that's, that's pretty great. So I can use this for other things down the road and, and I could just use the same driver and ping it and say, Hey, what's your state of charge? What's your current draw? And how long will it take before you're empty at that current draw? And that's pretty good for me because I don't want to characterize 15 different types of batteries. So let's go over the protection board. At the end, we have all of our battery connections that run in through our balance resistors. And then we can short either of these uh, not normally placed pads for 2S or 3S. So for the 2S, it's the top, two, it's both of them, and then shorts out a couple of those. For the 3S, it's just the bottom one. These two are two protection MOSFETs, one for charge, one for discharge. And this here is our current sensing resistor runs into the chip with a differential amplifier and a whole bunch of measurements and stuff goes on in, in here. On the bottom, we have our EE prom, which I want to use to store those characteristics. And here we have our write protect, which would basically uh, prevent writing to half of it. On the other side of the board, you can see the silk screen kind of outlines things a, a bit better. So we have all of our pack connections down here at the bottom. At the other end, we have our data communications and our voltage for EEPROM, as well as the two bigger pads, which are doubled on the other side for the power, as well as a little alert that I don't really have a plan to use, but it's included anyway. So now that I've sorted out a lot of the, the fuel gauge stuff, the multi-chemistry stuff. I need a smart charger. I need to be able to figure out a way of detecting all of these characteristics. Well, I thought I was going to be really clever and add a little piece of memory to my board, which I did, it's right here. What that would do is it would store things like the pack voltage, the number of cells, the manufacturer, what is its capacity? What is its uh, charge current? What is its maximum discharge current? What is its current sense? Like all of these things that you would need for a plugging it into a smart charger and basically having it configure everything that you would on these RC chargers, you have to select chemistry and charge voltage, number of cells, charge current. And, um, you know, do you want balancing or not? Like you could know all of those things. Is there balancing in the pack? Is it external? Do you want me to do it? Do you not want me to do it? Um, all sorts of that stuff could, could be done. So I put a little, um, electronically erasable programmable read-only memory. Basically something that you, you don't kind of read and write back to a lot, but we could actually still use it for storing like history and stuff in, in uh, another area. And we could actually have a write protected zone that would keep all of that. And that once it's built and programmed, you can't write to it anymore and you will forever know what that is. Great from a manufacturing perspective, but again, not a commercial product. So what does that matter? Um, I do plan to reuse a lot of my designs in the future. So it could very well end up in a consumer product in the future. Last week, I started trying to write the driver to talk to this thing. Um, I've been using it through kind of a dev kit setup and uh, starting to write and uh, looking through the data sheet. And, and honestly, I'm not, I'm not super keen on a, a lot of brands documentation. Uh, unfortunately, Maxim is included in this. Their chips are getting really good, but their documentation is still lagging behind TI. Um, but their parts are, are, I mean, starting to use a lot of Maxim parts, uh, surprisingly. So I'm reading through and I'm reading through and I'm seeing, oh my God, there are so many registers. Like this is a lot and they're not laid out in any coherent fashion. And there's this, like, there's these huge blocks of like, there's this block for model gauge and this user one. And there's this one called SBS. What's SBS? 
You know that XKCD comic where they start off with, there are 14 competing standards, and someone says, yeah, you know, we should do something about this. And soon, there are 15 competing standards. Surprisingly, this is the opposite of that. So this last update to what's called the SBS Smart Battery Specification, oh God, uh, so simple, so, so direct, was in 1998. It was finished 25 years ago. And I don't know of any consumer products that actually use the SBS externally. So you're likely, you could be watching this on a device, uh, a tablet or a laptop, probably not a cell phone, um, that actually has SBS compatible battery in it. That's about the only place it lives is inside laptops right now. And it's the battery that's actually doing all the fuel gauge measurement and, and reporting back because it's it's standardized. All these chips from Texas Instruments and Linear and Analog and Max, you know, those last three are all just analog devices now. Um, so that doesn't matter, but it's, these are all intercompatible. Like you can get your basic functionality by with a battery that has a TI part on it a battery that has a max part on it. You don't need to change those drivers. They will just work with the other battery. And you can ask, uh, what's your discharge current right now? What's your time to empty? What's your capacity? What is your, your battery age? You can ask all those things. They're all standard and we don't use it externally. This, I think, well, I would have loved to have seen this because this would have enabled you to use you probably have to have little plastic dummy adapters that change the contact pins, but you could charge, you could charge your um, DSLR mirrorless camera. You could charge a, a removable laptop cell if maybe Lenovo still makes those. Um, all the way up to things like RC cars or um, power tools. So this all already exists down the road. I'm probably going to make a, a charger around that, but that's not the next thing I want to do because right now I, I can charge these batteries. I feel that they are safe and protected no matter which chemistry I use, so long as I configure them correctly. And I, I feel like I can do uh, a bunch of, of design work with them. I want to probably make 3D printed enclosures and probably a different interface for plugging in that can handle the high current. But generally, had SBS been implemented in, in our daily lives, we could have eliminated a lot of dumb chargers while maintaining removable batteries. And then uh, I think I, I think a lot of people must have done some really amazing work to put that together and great, it's in laptops, but I'm gonna try and move that forward in another direction as well with this project. And, and whether or not it ever gets adopted by anything else, that eh, doesn't matter. But with my hopes of keeping this as open source as possible, that means maybe someone's gonna have a little universal charger out there. So what's next? Uh, I think I'm actually, I'm not gonna touch the charger. Um, this is a uh, deviation enough. I have ways of charging my own cells. I have RC car cell packs. I have power supplies. It has balancing and protection. And so I'm quite happy with that aspect. Uh, so I think I wanna get back to the other part, which is going to be trying to really figure out when digging up my four or five year old design, and seeing what went wrong. Um, and, and realistically, it could actually work, but do I want to change the size? Do I want to change form factors? How will it interface with the battery? Where where can I mount it? Um, that's a real problem. If anyone had any ideas, let me know, um, because there is, there's not a lot of uh, mounting options for when you have a wire running off of a derailleur and you now have a board and a battery that you need to, yeah. Hopefully you learned a little bit about battery protection and fuel gauges and charging. And honestly, I think a forgotten standard. I'm genuinely looking forward to working on this project again and having the free time to do it. Uh, because there's, there's so many of these systems out there that now have dead or dying power units that are either just going to end up in a, a waste bin. So given that the performance of the motors and the sensors in these things are are so top notch and, and no corners were cut, a little bit of electronics is going to keep something like this working. And I'm a huge fan of removable batteries. I, I love the concept of being able to swap in a battery as you need it. Um, with that, thanks for watching.
Do you like being on camera, Leaf? No? Okay. <laughs>